Telekinesis, also known as psychokinesis, is about much more than just moving objects with your mind. In this presentation, we'll follow the journey of two women who learn telekinesis over several weeks. They'll share the surprising ways that telekinesis connects with spirituality, psychology, and more. They'll begin with an introductory meeting with Sean McNamara to get their feet wet. After that, they'll continue training at home. And finally, they'll return to show us just how far they've come. They meet inside Mayu Meditation Sanctuary in Denver, Colorado. Shay Curtis manages Orange Skies, a skydiving operation in Colorado. She's also a certified yoga instructor and meditation teacher. Michelle Cox is a Denver-based psychotherapist. She's also an artist who has a deep connection to horses. Um, my name is Shay. I am just interested in learning all about the mind, um, all about energy, and I kind of really got into it last year when I took uh, yoga teacher training and just really started to learn about my body, learn about meditation, um, and that has led me here. My name is Michelle, and I am a licensed clinical social worker, and in my practice, I'm really aware of how important it is to pay attention to the connection between the mind and the body. And what I know I've discovered over the last few years um, is that there is so much that we don't know actually about that. I've heard so many other people's experiences with it, and I know that it is possible, um, so I'm really interested to kind of have these experiences for myself um, and just see how it feels, see what I learn, um, see what I learn about myself. The thought of being able to use energy and, and, and my mind to move something is pretty amazing to me, so I'm really excited and pretty open to, to learning about this and just seeing what, what's next. Sean begins by teaching them a special breathing technique to get them in the proper state for telekinesis. After relaxing further, they begin forming an energetic connection to their objects. And you're not even trying to send any energy or anything like that, you're just looking at it. Now it's time to put the glass covers over the objects to protect them from external air movement. Sean will carefully guide them each step of the way. So, so you're not pushing in any way, you're just looking at it. Your intention is already there for it to move. In time, the objects will begin to move in response to Michelle and Shay's intention and energetic presence. They need to continue relaxing their bodies and minds in order to strengthen their connection to the objects. Uh, do you notice anything so far about the relationship between the breathing and the movement? Um, I felt like at first it would go one way with the in-breath and the other way with the out-breath and then I don't know, as time goes on I notice my arms get tense and it gets more random. Sean knows how important it is for them to be able to do this without touching the container at all. So he leads them to the next step. You go. Just take your hands like an inch or two off the glass, but leave them in that same posture. The newly forged connection remains intact even after taking the hands away from the glass. This is just the beginning. Michelle's connection is unusually strong at this early stage of the training. They're starting to see how important a sense of connection and relationship is for this to work. And there does seem to be, at, at times I guess, there seems to be a correlation between the energy of my in-breath and the holding of it and then An important quality for success is patience. The passage of time allows for a type of entrainment to happen between the person and the object. Let's hear what Shay and Michelle have to say at this point. 
Afterwards, we'll follow them into their homes as they continue improving their abilities. It's, yeah. it's so relaxing, but it's very, um, it wears you out after a while too, right? Like, can you just, just say a little bit about how you feel now? Um, I feel like it was, it was mocking me. <laughs> <laughs> or it was making fun because, yeah, I felt super comfortable, super relaxed at the beginning, and then as soon as I moved my hands, it was like, I don't know, just my mind got in the way, um, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> Shay's optimism and humor are wonderful qualities for learning this ability. Michelle's also having fun. This is amazing. Wow. My husband's not going to believe it. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be Mr. Skepticism. I am happy to be the example of <laughs> it does not always happen right away, um, but I'm really excited to get better and be able to relax into it and have the breath be more natural, because I would focus on that a lot and kind of be like, oh, I should breathe in more, I should breathe out more. And so I'm happy to learn to relax into it, yeah. Sean discusses the need to let one's deeper self do the work and the fact that trying too hard can get in the way. Sometimes you're getting in your own way when you try and do this. You're yeah. trying the wrong way, you're trying it all. Yeah. So you're actually saying that because I'm even distracted, it is still yeah. it is still me connecting to the tin floor. It's like, this will show you consciousness, the subconsciousness, or you talk could talk about your worldly self and your spiritual self or your higher self. Mm -hmm. What's who's who's actually doing this, you know, and maybe it's not just you. I mean there are two parties involved here, right? Mm -hmm. Or except that you're not separate, so what is it? <laughs> you know, so that's this good. Michelle is starting to see how the principles of telekinesis apply to real-world applications. Well, and it also makes me go to uh, thinking about my connection with clients as I'm in the room with them, mm -hmm. and how that connection is more than just hearing each other's words and looking into each other's eyes, really. It is more, it is this whatever's happening here, I think it is. It's from my heart, it's from my center, it's from my core. And I know that there are times when I intentionally do try to do that. But to also realize that this is always happening is pretty amazing. Or it can be always happening. And it's also about what I know in terms of and I will speak of it as energy, what I know happens with horses and humans mm -hmm. and how we are able to be a part of their heart energy field and that our system syncs with theirs, we become coherent. That's pretty phenomenal. Um, so however that all plays into some of what we're doing or even starting to look at that in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, other than what's measured by all of the scientific instruments that they use to measure that. Mm -hmm. Let's hear how Shay feels about her progress so far. So my foil never showed the other side to me. It did once for a moment, and then the other side turned away from me again. Um, so I think that's pretty interesting that I could never see the other side. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> There's something about that, but yeah. it's being timid. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. So more, it's saying more will be revealed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> more to come later. Now Shay and Michelle will spend a few weeks on their own, reading Sean's books, Defy Your Limits, and Meditation X, to improve their abilities. Let's hear what they have to say. I just tried the wall exercise for the first time. Um, practicing intention, feeling the intention and moving my arm to touch the wall and feeling my intention before I remove my hand from the wall. Um, it was interesting. I feel like I could spend a lot more time doing that and really learn to listen to my body a lot better. Um, 
but there were times where it just feels like this spark of energy between my heart and my mind just as I, just before or just when I decide I'm moving my arm, I guess. Um, so yeah, very interesting, something that I'm curious to learn more about and become more aware of uh, just noticing what I feel in my own body. So I definitely notice that when I allow myself to notice my shoulders and their tenseness, um, and as I take in a breath and let myself relax, it absolutely makes a difference. And that tenseness creeps in so quickly. But letting myself just drop in, letting my stomach be relaxed and holding that breath. And that pause. And then the exhale. This is day two. Um, I was sitting here for a while with no reaction from the foil um, or very minimal. Um, just trying to really get a feel for when things started moving and when it really got going. Sean said something about that moment of intention in moving your arm um, and having that feeling over and over to move the foil and I definitely get a sense for that um, that it's kind of this repeated intention when it really starts to have a full spin. So. I'm remembering what Sean wrote about in the book that I'm reading which is that in normal meditation practice sometimes we are trying very hard not to succumb to the tiredness or the weariness or even sleepiness. Um, and so it's kind of cool to be able to allow myself to relax <laughs> and not worry about that because I do get into this very sort of comfortable spot that feels almost like I'm on the brink of letting myself drift off in some way, and that still is a good place to be. Um, I don't have to correct it. Um, when I practiced with my piece, I felt when, not every time, but when it would change direction, um, just before that, I would just, just feel it. I would just know there was a change, uh, and then it would stop and start going the other way. Um, so that was really cool. Now I'm just going to settle back. My hands in my lap. Everybody learns at their own pace. But it's not about how well they can move an object, but what they learn about themselves that matters most. I'm, I'm struggling at times, um, but I've had a couple of just moments that clicked um, and the foil just was spinning and spinning and switching directions. Um, and at those times, I feel that I really tuned into my breathing, not necessarily um, doing a full deep breath in, holding it, and then the breath out and holding it. It was it was maybe a version of that, but more relaxed, so I wasn't focusing on it as much. Um, and then I, I felt like I tuned into my heartbeat as well, um, or just noticing my heart or connecting to it. I don't know um, exactly how to describe, but there was, some attention to my breathing, some attention to my heart, um, and then obviously focusing on the foil. Just a few observations from today in working with the breath, um, noticing the effect of the pause and the relaxation and the release of the breath. 
that seemed to be, I think, more influential or connected to how the tinfoil moved um, or how much it moved. I don't think I could say that that's true all the time, though, um, because there were times when my in-breath and the holding and the real focus on the the my pelvic floor, the the depth of that breath, um, the 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 tightening of my core, that actually also seemed to influence it. So I'm not so sure that for me I can make a distinction yet, which is the more effective or more powerful of the two uh, ways that breath is being used, if we want to say it that way. With repeated practice, carefully going through each step, Shay continues improving her ability. Michelle decides to work with two separate objects at the same time, one in front of the other. But what has struck me in some of the readings, as I said, and um, with what I heard in some of the videos that I was watching, um, was, and, and these are Sean's words from, from your book, Sean, it also gave me real evidence of the impact of my mind upon the physical world. And what I am in touch with about this is that there are times when I'm aware that my mind is trying so hard to do something with the tinfoil, um, that I'm actually trying to will it in some way, right? That's ego stepping in and, and trying to force something to control it. And what I know about that in my own life is that that's not really ever a good place. Um, for me, it's not ever produced <laughs> very, very uh, meaningful results, or maybe there are big lessons that are learned <laughs> with that kind of an experience. After several weeks, they come back together to share their progress. Stay tuned, because after we hear their insights, we'll watch them go far beyond anything they've been able to do so far. <laughs> um, yeah, I've had a lot of fun over the past month, uh, and I was actually thinking to myself, because in your book, you kind of go through like, you know, if you've made it to this point, you've accomplished this much, and you've had these goals, and you've followed through. And uh, I know for myself, it's always hard for me to um, really lock down personal goals and achieve them. So having the accountability of videoing myself and knowing that we were meeting up again, it really helped me be more accountable through the whole process. So I really liked that. Um, with that accountability, like I kind of established my own practice at home and I uh, hope that it's something that I keep doing because I'm definitely interested in getting better at it and seeing how I can use the skills, I guess, that I've learned to um, learn about other things and see kind of what else it can relate to in my life. I just thought it was a great thing to add to my routine to help me relax, get ready for bed, um, I wasn't doing anything remotely like that as part of my sleep hygiene, if we would call it that. It's such an amazing way to have the attention and the focus outside that also allows for this inside to settle and get quiet and drop in, and then your attention is able to be focused. Um, so much of the work that I do with people is introducing them to the to the importance of being able to be familiar with their body and familiar with themselves at any moment. Um, and it's a really, by being able to focus on something else, I think it's almost like a bridge for someone who has a hard time focusing only inside and learning to, to, to approach it as a meditation because they get to see this thing happening here, but this is all happening also at the same time. Especially you addressed it at the towards the end of your book, um, how it can be similar to the healing practices or uh, I think like things like you're talking about where 
you can um, focus your attention on your own body and heal different things inside yourself. Um, that's something that is kind of what led me here to learn about telekinesis because I'm interested in other things like that. Um, or like when you compared it to prayer because, you know, a strong connection between I grew up Catholic, so, um, you know, seeing, learning prayer and um, just the, the, I guess, meditative style of that religion where it can be very calming um, with things like that. And so, yeah, just connections like that to different spiritual things or um, healing things. And at times it was easy when I went home, but then after a couple of sessions, um, I noticed myself just trying to jump right into, you know, my hands off the glass or something like that. So then, as I read the book and you kind of talk about, you know, start with out the glass every time, just kind of reestablish your connection to the foil. Um, so once I started doing that at the beginning of every session, I would start with no glass, then put the glass on, keep my hands on. Um, so doing that progression definitely helped me with practicing at home. Are you surprised by how, how far you got, or...? Um, I am. I never crossed over to being, like, across the room or anything. Um, but, yeah, there was times where I just would have my hands in my lap and tin foils still going crazy, and so that's really exciting to see that, you know, I can officially not be touching the table or anything around it, um, and just sit there and watch it spin, so... That's been really exciting, yeah. I think what's wonderful are the, uh, the videos that are available that then give a voice to what you're also explaining in the book um, and with words and, and pictures. But the video, I think, was, is a really nice um, additional resource. When I was reading, the first chunk of the book kind of goes over just the introduction and you know, the starting steps that you take um, and everything that we really went over that first time we met. And then after that, it's just full of uh, different tricks and kind of problem solving and tips. Um, so that was really useful that, you know, I had that foundation set and then afterwards it was like, oh yeah, my mind was wandering just like this and so I just need to, you know, look away for a second and come back or I need to focus on my breathing. So it was nice that uh, it reminded you and taught you a bunch of different things that you can try throughout the process, whether you're feeling frustrated or, um, you know, having any difficulty. There's several different things to try at that time and help you progress to the next step. Because it's just, I don't know, with each step you get more comfortable, you, you believe more in your abilities. Um, and at first I was definitely trying to analyze, like, what's happening? So I'd get stuck in my head of just trying to figure out, if I just knew why I was making it move, then I could make it move better. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it takes practice to not focus on that and s settle on just your intention and your attention on the object. Um, so yeah, practice can definitely help you get better and better and do kind of trickier things, I guess. It's time for them to stretch their wings. Sean invites them to stand and increase their distance from the object. And everything remains the same, same technique. They've obviously developed their abilities over the last few weeks. Their connection to their objects is strong. Let's hear what they have to say about this step and then watch them go beyond what they ever thought was possible. That was the most sustained movement from a distance that I'd had ever. Um, so that was pretty cool. I agree, that was the longest I've sustained, or I guess the most movement I've had, um, and also the furthest I've stood away from it and got, got movement from it. Now they'll go even further. 
as both of them focus on the same object, eventually moving it from across the room. Michelle has a suggestion for making this technique more effective. Would you be willing to try something? Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to hold hands? Yeah. And see what that does, if anything? It seems that when two people do telekinesis together, their connection to each other is an integral part of the process. Now it's time to challenge their new connection by standing up and taking a step back. Clearly, the energetic bond continues even after standing up. As we'll see, distance is no longer a limitation for Shay and Michelle. Do you want to just go for it and go all the way back towards the wall? Sure. They're pleasantly surprised, but after working at it for so long, it feels quite natural. As we say goodbye, let's hear their parting thoughts. But just in general, I'm really glad that I got to be a part of all of this because it's been really exciting to learn. It's been cool to see how it differed for you and you trying with two pieces of foil and two um, glass containers. So uh, I just want to keep going and learn more and um, probably start doing some of the other things. Like you said, you've done remote viewing before. That'd be something that would be really cool to now try after this experience and see um, how I feel they relate or if I feel like uh, it was easier because I had this experience, which I feel like it would be, so. Telekinesis is an amazing way to experience the relationship between our minds and bodies and the fact that we are truly connected to the world around us. And there are other ways to explore consciousness. If you would like to learn more or to meet Sean McNamara yourself, please visit mindpossible.com. Thank you for watching.